So your brain can change in three very basic ways to support learning. And the first is chemical. So your brain actually functions by transferring chemical signals between brain cells, what we call neurons, and these trigger a series of actions and reactions. So to support learning, your brain can increase the amount or the concentrations of these chemical signaling that's taking place between neurons. Now, because this kind of change can happen very rapidly, this supports short-term memory or the short-term improvement in the performance of a motor skill. The second way that the brain can change to support learning is by altering its structure. So during learning, the brain can change the connections between neurons. Now here, the physical structure of the brain is actually changing, so this takes a bit more time. These types of changes are related to long-term memory. Now, these processes, they interact, and let me give you an example of how. So we've all tried to learn a new motor skill, maybe playing the piano, maybe learning to juggle. And you've had the experience of getting better and better within a single session of practice and thinking, I've got it. And then maybe you've returned turn the next day and all those improvements from the day before they're lost. What happened? Well, in the short term, your brain was able to increase the chemical signaling between your neurons. For some reason, those changes did not induce the structural change that are necessary to support long-term memory. Remember that long-term memories take time and what you see in the short term does not reflect learning. It's these physical changes that are now going to support long-term memories and chemical changes that support short-term memories. Structural changes also can lead to integrated networks of brain regions that function together to support learning and they can also lead to certain brain regions that are important for very specific behaviors to change their structure or to enlarge and so here's some examples of that so people who read Braille they have larger hand sensory areas in their brain than those of us who don't your dominant hand motor region which is on the left side of your brain if you're right-handed is larger than the other side and research shows that London taxi cab drivers who actually have to memorize a map of London to get their taxi cab license, they have larger brain regions devoted to spatial or mapping memories. Now, the last way that your brain can change to support learning is by altering its function. As you use a brain region, it becomes more and more excitable and easy to use again. And as your brain has these areas that increase their excitability, the brain shifts how and when they're activated. With learning, we see that whole networks of brain activity are shifting and changing. So neuroplasticity is supported by chemical, by structural, and by functional changes. And these are happening across the whole brain.